All right, we're going to continue with our media availabilities here at Phoenix Raceway in advance of Sunday's uh, NASCAR Cup Series Championship race. We're joined by one of our Championship 4 crew chiefs, Rudy Fugel, who is the crew chief of the number 24, Hendrick Motorsports Chevrolet. Uh, Rudy, why don't you just go over quickly for us how you feel after today's session? Yeah, um, it went solid. Um, I think we, you know, fought some some problems. That actually, I hope to fight um, things that I think are fixable for uh, for Sunday. So I'm um, excited about that. I thought we were, uh, we got better um, by the end of practice compared to where we started, which is always a good thing. And um, we have a good spot to uh, to go work on it. So I think we're in. The, we're uh, we got a shot. Awesome. We'll open up to questions. We'll get a wireless microphone to you. We'll start with Jordan Bianchi, then go to Bob and Zach. Jordan Bianchi, the Athletic. When we look at the practice feeds. Jordan Bianchi, the Athletic. When you, when we, we okay. Use the use the microphone, please, and they'll get it fixed. Okay. When we look at the practice feeds, you know, we we see where everybody's at. Is there anything that you can, as a crew chief, you take away from that, or is that you know you're looking at something else and bigger picture stuff? Um. Yeah. I mean, you're always looking at the the sheet. I mean, that's how we get evaluated, right? But uh, really looking at, at averages, and then you're trying to find uh, a way today's practice was uh, there's a lot of people in traffic, so you get a lot of, uh, you know, some skewed results probably on some of your runs, uh, and that's for everybody. So your five-lap average might look bad because you got traffic in the first five, and somebody's 15-lap average because they got it tail end. So we always try to evaluate that from SMT later on in, in the video. But, um, yeah, just uh, really worrying about our car mostly for this weekend and trying to make it the best of it. Yeah, no, especially, yes. I, I mean, the way with this package in this place, I think uh, the more we can have a balance for the long run over in the short run is uh, w is the key. We're going to go to Bob, then Zach, and Nate. I'm Bob Hawkers, Fox Sports. Yesterday, Williams said that you guys put the helmet fans a little higher in the car. I'm curious, was there any re thought of, of saying we're going to keep them low and suck it up for a championship race? No, I mean his health is number one. So if it, if he is if he has five percent more, um, you know, in the tank at the end of the race, it's going to pay way more off than uh, that little bit of weight up high. So um, that's pretty much the only place we haven't put him all year long, trying to find the best place to get the fumes and the temperature right to his helmet. So uh, it's uh, definitely worth a try. No, th this week, this week, yeah, this weekend is the first time we've gone there. Our our teammate, uh, one of our teammates has run it there. So uh, we're always trying to search to try to make it uh, better on the drivers. Go to Zach. Zach Sterniello, NASCAR.com. Rudy, um, there was a like four or five lap stretch there where William caught the 12 and was trying to get around him. I, I don't know if they were on the same tires at that point, but um, Ryan was able to defend that a little bit before William got by. What are you looking for in those moments um, and how – how much can you gauge from that mid mid session? Yeah, I think uh, he had four lap older tires, so he had a little bit of a disadvantage. But you're, I mean, you're really giving William a shot to to see the strengths and weaknesses of, of his car, you know. And and you don't know that could be a bad run. It could not be, you know, they could have made a change that was bad, and they're still making laps. But but anyways, the the characteristics of the car generally transfers over throughout the weekend. So I think that that part's good. Go to Nate. Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Rudy, for a guy who flew on the middle seat for four hours out here on Wednesday, William seemed in a really good mood, a really good place yesterday. Like, how quickly did he kind of just, or you and him and the team, just put behind Martinsville? It seems like selective memory works here that he's just passed it already. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it helps that, you know, you, we made it and and we have a, a an ultra focus for this week. But, but yeah, we, you can't carry that stuff. We race way too much to uh, to carry that with you. So, um, we'll probably talk about Martinsville again in probably 10 days, but um, we talked about it real quick on Monday morning, and then we were we were done and over with. I mean, that's what he does. He's he's not uh, he he's uh he's cheap like me, so I understand that. We'll go to Cole and then. No, no, I was on the team plane, but he had to get here earlier to talk to y'all. Go to Cole and then wrap with Wolfgang. Cole Kusumano with the RS1 Republic. Uh, Rudy, I'm just curious if the, the new tires, if you noticed anything um, different as far as tire wear or, you know, anything like that. 
Yeah, n- nothing yet. Um, I think the characteristic of those will come out in the sun. You know, today's practice was was mostly in the shade. So um, we and, we, and you'll, once we get a 50 lap run, you'll see more characteristic of that. But um, I- even last week in Martinsville, we didn't really see a difference um, until the race started. And is there like a big difference in if you were to run practice during racing conditions um, as opposed to you know during a sunset and at night? Yeah, for sure. Uh, there's a couple of things we're talking about that the way the car builds over the long run, um, you know, air pressure builds, that kind of stuff that we're going to have to anticipate, you know, the right things. So, um, but I don't know, that's uh, when you're a truck racer, that's usually where you get stuck in wherever they can let you practice and then wherever you can race. So we're kind of used to a lot of those changes, especially here. So I feel good about that. All right, we're going to wrap with Wolfgang. Uh, Wolfgang Monza from Germany, Ranch Sport Press Agency. Uh, coming over from Europe, I mean, it's relatively warm here compared to Europe right now where we have the first snow. How big is the influence of this uh, relatively hot temperatures to the aero package? Yeah, for sure. It's it's going to heat the tires up. And uh, and without the downforce, um, as much downforce on the cars, when the tires get hot, you're going to lose control and the cars are going to lose handling a whole lot quicker into the run. So um, tires get overheated. Uh, let's say they're at lap 40 with more downforce. Now it's going to be tw- lap 25, and and uh, so it just spe- speeds up the ill handling and and how the cars change over the run. So it'll be it'll be pretty big as warm as it is. So uh, it's 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 probably seven eight degrees uh, ambient warmer than it normally is this time of year. So we'll uh, definitely be dealing with that. When you overheat the tires, can you can you correct this with air pressure? Uh, we'll try. You know that it'll help a little bit, but it'll uh, it's. Uh, you know, it's just, you know, something we'll have to deal with, and, and everybody will have the same thing. So you just try to build it in the setups. All right, Rudy, thanks for joining us. Good luck to you and William on Sunday.